Antigini from the Somerville Public Library. And with me today, as usual, is Allison Mitchell, our children's librarian at West, and Lily Sundell Thomas, um, our one of our librarians at the main library. Hello, guys. Hi, Kathy. How are you? Hey, Kathy. So we're gathered here today to talk about reads for a particular time of season. Um, based on what I'm feeling and seeing around me and my need for a scarf, um, I feel like we're talking about winter. Ooh. Yeah. So um, that, and we also have this amazing, colorful game in front of us that Allison brought. And um, Allison, please, before we get rolling. Sure. Um, so you may not know that all three branches, the central branch as well as the east and west branches, circulate toys. Um, so you can actually check toys out of the library and keep them for a couple weeks, selection a little bit, then when your kids get tired of them, you can just bring them back to the library and get something new. So as an example, we brought this today. This is kind of a, a form of Jenga, but you have to roll this die, mm -hmm. see? And you can only... I'm ready to wrap it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> remove the color, the, the um, block that is the color. That, so we'll show red, so I have to remove a red. I'm going to go with this one down here. Great. So we've got gonna, three colors. Yep, three colors. We're going to play a little Red, of this green, as we blue. go along. All okay. Right. Oh, I'll go ahead. Let's see. Green. green. This one look. Oh, no. No. <laughs> it's not as easy as yeah, it looks. It's hard. <laughs> I really hope I don't roll it. Good luck, sister. All right. Blue. Blue. <laughs> oh. Oh. There you there go. There you go. So if this looks like fun to you, come check it out at the West Branch Library. The three libraries have slightly different toy collections, um, but there's definitely something for everyone. This is great. Well, I brought a ton of things. <laughs> this pile here. Oh, I like oh. the top one. Yes. Very timely. Yes. So the top one here, Murder on the Orient Express. Um, Agatha Christie, classic, very winter-themed, and the movie uh, mm. just came out. Um, and I also really like this vintage edition from the West Branch Young Adult Collection. Um, just a really fun uh, book. Murder Mysteries, obviously there's a good plot twist, um, or if you just want to get psyched for the movie. Have either of you seen it? Mm -hmm. Well, I've seen the original movie. Mm -hmm. I didn't love it. Yeah, it's well, I mean, the, the um, <laughs> I've heard good things about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an all-star cast. Yeah. So. Yeah. What's the, is there an ad in the middle of the book? Finding yeah, it's like this fun vintage. Like, what can we sign up for from 1950? <laughs> I think it's really. <laughs> um, Enter the world of mysteries. It's free. There's no obligation, no purchase necessary. Enter the world of mystery classics with the Agatha Christie mystery collection as your guide. Oh, yes. so it's like a book of the month maybe or something? Yeah, maybe we should try to. Um, Sign up. Send it in. Place passport stamp here. Okay. Okay, I'll be fine. I've got a lot of books. So. <laughs> um, so next up, I have this young adult novel. I love to read young adult. Um, so this is Salt to the Sea um, by Ruta Sepetis. I looked up how to say her last name, how it looks. Mm. Um, this is a, another World War II book, but I somehow I just keep coming back to them. I don't, I don't know. Um, but it's it takes place um, Poland, these four evacuees who are going towards this um, ocean liner that is turned into like an evacuation ship, basically. And there are four really different narrators. One of them is this sort of like conflated um, German soldier who everything that's going on is right. Um, one is this guy who's smuggling a precious piece of art. Another is a 14-year-old mm. Polish girl who's pregnant. And then another one is a nurse somewhere that I don't remember now. But it's really interesting mm. and um, kind of has a feel-good mm. ending. But it's also about this piece of history. It's a true event. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert. But it's a piece of real What's piece of art? history. Okay. Um, who knows? Uh, uh oh. Okay, so <laughs> it's a piece of history, and it's apparently before this book was like kind of a little known piece of history. Um, but I really liked it. It's mm. sort of maybe a read alike for uh, The Book Thief. Mm -hmm. um, really easy read, um, like a day. Yeah, it sounds like a bit of a page turner. It was a page turner. Is, was this her first novel? I don't recognize the author. I don't think think so. came to mind, like, if you had read one of our other books. Mm -mm. I just know, oh, it says here on the back, also by her, Out of the Easy, 
I don't know, but I think this one was really well received and it might have even won an award. What else do you have, Lily? Oh, thank you, Allison. Um, well, uh, the next book I have is The Sympathizer, which is actually our books and book for December. I know so many good things about books. Yes, and so people come into the library all the time talking about really? it. Really? Oh, I'm so glad to hear. So, Books and Brews is our offsite book club, which I've plugged here a million times yep. about it. Um, we meet at Aeronaut Brewery, and our December book is The Sympathizer, which is sort of a spy novel that takes place during the Vietnam War. So, the narrator of this is um, an undercover communist spy who is a, a commander in the southern uh, Vietnamese army during the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's pretty fast paced, kind of mm -hmm. a page turner. And um, we let, actually let the people who are in the book club vote for the book. And it won the Pulitzer Prize in 2016. So did you have two, what, how many other titles did they choose from? Is it three? Three. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So the other ones were Swamplandia oh, to read. Yeah. I mean, it's fine. This, it this is great, but um, oh, it was good. Yeah. Okay. Well, I enjoyed it. Yes. Yeah. I think you'd like it. Okay. Um, and then Blood Bones and Butter, which I read and really loved. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't read that. By Gabrielle Hamilton. So fit in a nonfiction title. So you've met Books and Bruises met twice so far, right? Yes. And they're about to have their third meeting, and then that'll be for the. Is this for the? This, one? No, no, this is for the Zadie fourth Smith one. For yes, yeah, right. Swing Time. Uh, so, yeah, really right. popular program and a popular title. To yeah, go that's it. fantastic. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> so, you've got enough books, cool. so that's yeah. fine. But it's a nonfiction title. It's called The Lost City of the Monkey God um, by Douglas Preston, who's like a really well known author. Um, this happens to be a nonfiction title of his, but he also writes fiction, I believe. And it's just so interesting. So the author is actually part of a group that goes to Honduras and is exploring um, this area of rainforest that is supposedly has this lost city, which cool. locals call the city of the monkey god or the white city. Um, and they actually use this really, really advanced, um, like, it's called LIDAR, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's um, detection hmm. to like map out the rainforest oh, floor to find the city. Yeah, this was, that's cool. Yes, mm -hmm. um, but it's it's really interesting. In the beginning, he sort of takes you through the history of, um, of different people have looked for the city in the past. A lot of them were crooks. <laughs> and a lot of them sort of just kind of stole rich people's money to go on these expeditions oh, and maybe okay, secretly yeah. pan for gold or whatever they were doing. Um, but really fun read and travel kind of wintertime book. I what's was just the, thinking, yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good yeah. winter read. What's the time period? Um, it's really recent. So he goes through the history like way, way back into the um, 1900s, 1800s, um, but teen, I think, that they, that they actually did. They this. went on the expedition and there's like a nice sort of center spot where you can actually see visuals. So are um, they looking for something and they're not sure if it's there or it definitely is there? Do you know? Um, I'm pretty sure they found it because in the beginning he says that he tells the people on the mission that he will only write about it if they find something. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I really am liking it. Yeah, that sounds like a good read. Um, it seems like it's well researched. I haven't looked that deeply into it, but mm -hmm. it's also just like really fascinating. Mm -hmm. So I, I like recommend it. it. I like it. Yeah. I'll take a snapshot of that so I remember to put it on my list. Yeah, there was a book that was similar that came out kind of recently. I think it was The Last City of Z or something. Oh, yeah. No. Um, so the last title I have is also a mystery. I'm feeling mystery-y. I think it's the cold weather. I don't know. Uh, Magpie Murders by Anthony Horwitz. I kind of to read it because it had a whole ton of holes on on it, um, mm -hmm. and I just like to see what everybody wants to read sometimes. Uh, ten of holds because it's new? When yeah. yeah. It's oh, new. okay. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, let's see, June 2017. Mm -hmm. It's calming down. The yeah. hype is calming down now, but um, it was really popular for a while. So a good time to request it. Mm -hmm. Good time to request it. You'll get it. I got this in a couple of days. I had to re-request it because I had read it a while ago. Um, book is really interesting. So it starts out as this cozy mystery mm -hmm. story. Um, and continues in the cozy mystery and chapter. Then um, it switches over to the publisher of the cozy mystery. So it's from her perspective and she doesn't get the final chapter of the book. Goes into this mystery of her own, which is, so the cozy mystery I think t is takes place 
maybe in the 50s. Mm -hmm. um, I could be wrong. The publisher story is like really current and she sort of has this own mystery of her own trying to figure out what happened to the missing chapter and then I'm going to give another, should I give another spoiler? No, because no, you, so like you when I see books going through circulation yeah. all the time I, I typically put them on my list too so this came and I started it and I I wasn't feeling it, so I didn't finish it. Grabbed it makes me want oh, to go back yes. and check it out again yeah. and finish it, so don't tell me what happens. Yeah. I really liked the plot twist. Okay. Um, okay. It was just really cool. And also the um, the publisher's story like ties in really deeply with the cozy mystery. Nice. Like the author has like left clues in his cozy mystery. Right. So right. I um, feel I'm gonna approach this completely differently yeah. the second time. Second time I try. Just leave it with you because I already read it. So thank you. Nice. Enjoy. I'm glad we could have this exchange. Wow. Yeah. Lily, thank you. So many good things nice right pile. now. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Now take a turn yes. again. Oh yeah. Here, let me put my pile away. Blue, lucky blue. Not and Allison, how many? What do so, you think okay, so okay, so yeah, I've read all sorts of things. Um, I'll start with YA and then get younger from there. Um, uh -oh. This is. Uh -oh, <laughs> I, just, I give up. All right. So, <laughs> this is um, Undefeated, and he's a nonfiction writer for young adults. He takes historical events and kind of puts a social justice twist on them, or write about, writes about cool. you know, um, things that happened um, primarily in American history that we might not be aware of. So, this is about um, Indian school, um, right around the turn of the century, the 1800s to 1900s. Um, they took children from Native American reservations and brought them to this boarding school to try to um, change their culture, basically. And this was right football as a game was was started. And I'm not really a football fan, um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But I totally got into this book, and I was saying to my husband, like, did you know that the passing game really changed? And he's like, yes, I knew that. Uh, <laughs> so, so anyway, so this um, Indian school football team became so good um, that it beat all of the other, it just, it just won. Uh, eventually, they just won, and they produced some amazing athletes, some amazing coaches, and it's just a real slice of history that I think is unknown to many people. So I, I really recommend this. If you like football, I think you'd love this book, but even if you don't like football, it's, mm -hmm. it's still really interesting, and Steve Sheinkin's other books are <coughs> fantastic also. Um, um, what are his other books? Is it part of... Is this a series? No, it's oh, not a series. Okay. The, uh, the Port Chicago 50 mm -hmm. um, is about an African-American oh, military yeah. unit um, that had to do extraordinarily dangerous work. Um, and when they refused, they were all court-martialed, even though they were being asked to do things that the white um, soldiers were not being asked to do. And that, that one was really fantastic. Yeah. But I would recommend any of his work. Dangerous, or most dangerous, mm -hmm. two or three years ago, right? Actually, as yep. was the bomb. Yeah. Wow. So, okay, great. So big fan of him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so then we'll go down to middle grade fiction. I brought two books, tests and clues and things like that. So, so you have that level of the book where they're following the clues, and then there's all this interpersonal stuff between the kids because there's like the mean kid and the obnoxious kid and <laughs> the nice kid. It's like a different version of um, Charlie and the Chocolate yes, Factory. Yes, exactly. Oh, it's like yeah. an update of Charlie and the Chocolate okay. Factory. Mm -hmm. So I think the Mr. Lemoncello books are great. Um, so I brought that. Mm -hmm. Then I just brought one picture book, um, which is a huge hit in the Somerville Public Library system right now. It's called This is a Ball. But tell me what you think. I was looking through this book because I brought it. Um, and it does not look like a ball. This is a ball. Right. Really? It's really fun. It's, it's a really, really fun hilarious. book. Oh, boy. All right. Um, what can you tell me? Let me a little oh, bit of it. I know. Okay. So, this is a ball. <laughs> Excellent. Great job. It's good to know we agree. Let's get started. This is a ball. And if it's to you, what would you say? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to look closer. This is a dog. Hmm. No, it's not. Yes, it's a dog for sure. <laughs> I can see its eyes, its legs. It must be a dog. This is a bike. No. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the wheels. It's definitely a bike. <laughs> so so this awesome. continuum, Sillier, um, 
And I would recommend this as a gift for pretty much and any kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. telling you what happens at the oh. end. You have to read the book. No spoilers today. <laughs> <laughs> this is just really fun. I think it's story time, but it would have also be great um, to read one-on-one -on -one with your favorite child. Um, yeah. So that's what I've brought today. All right. Are you looking at the end? I was. <laughs> oh. No, I can't. Oh, my Allison, goodness. Allison, were you talking about it? Also, well, I think I got, um, I kind of stole Lily's turn, and I, I don't know. I, I was too like nervous. If I'm allowed. <laughs> <laughs> It's not going to happen. Did you bring a book, Kathy? Well, I did. I'm feeling a little badly about I really wasn't thinking so much of the our wintry theme. Um, <laughs> but this is what I happen to be reading at the moment, which is Ann Tyler's um, Dinner at the Homesick mm -hmm. Restaurant. OK. And I, did have you read it? I have read it. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Um, I feel like <laughs> um, My fr good friend Jen, she makes great book recommendations for me. I really treasure them. And so, and she got me turned on to The Accidental Tourist, nice. which I love. Okay. Um, so this Baltimore, which is um, a lot of Ann Tyler's novels um, take place in Baltimore area. And it's this great family story. Great, but also like kind of sad. Mm -hmm. But it, it starts around the 30s, I think. Mm -hmm. um, well, the well, no. The book opens with Pearl, the mother, at the end of her life, and she—I haven't finished it yet—but she's on her deathbed essentially, and her children are around her. She has two sons and a daughter, and then the rest of the book is unfolding to kind of go back in time and okay. see how they were raised and see, you know, she was a single mom and how hard it was for her and how hard it was for the kids. But of course, what I really like about Ann Tyler is how funny she can be talking about a lot of very serious topics okay. and life um it, she's a beautiful writer um so anyway I'm thoroughly enjoying this and then for the whole Christmas theme as I was telling Lily what I think about this time of year is a Christmas carol because I love it so much and um I will go and you know read through it and nice. do you do that every year you read well it? I try to That's but then great. what I really like to do on Christmas morning is actually listen to the radio mm -hmm. broadcast of it the Campbell's Soup Playhouse <laughs> from 1930 Barrymore which is My so goodness. much fun so I'll like find that on the internet archive and and enjoy and actually I will also try to see a version a movie version of it so which I'm not that fussy about I yeah. like a Muppet Christmas Carol yeah. One of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a great, and actually it's a great book. I, I did it with the book group kids mm -hmm. years ago now, oh. but the one that I was hosting for kids in grades four through six, and there was a version of it that was published by, I think, Dorling Kim, where it had annotations on the, um, like, notes as okay. you were reading mm -hmm. it, which was so fascinating, and I, re I think it really helped. For some of the kids read that version, and some read, didn't read that mm -hmm. one, but... Um, it really helped give context, and they were also fascinated. So, yeah. nice, so nice. Is, you guys have a great like holiday season. Yeah, me too. I know me there's too, a lot yeah. to look forward to here. Um, and let it snow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, on the Media Center. <laughs> we'll you. see you guys in 2018. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>